Hello? You said it started at 4.45. I'm live. Uh, okay, I'll be right back. Hey, guys! How's it going? Uh, yeah, no, this is all plan. All according to plan. Uh, everything is planned. Everything, we've never done something that we didn't plan before. All right, glad to see that we have so many friendly faces here. <clears throat> My name, if you didn't know already, is Nathan. You might know me as a person who, you know, sends out the newsletter, does the discord all kinds of those sorts of things a community manager um and you know if you don't get the newsletters then that's totally fine i'll be uploading an npm package later with every newsletter ever it's only like six gig gigabytes so like not that much more than like any other package so it'll be there uh you can download it to look at all the newsletters so i would highly recommend if you haven't seen them yet thank you all for being here you know, you guys could be literally doing anything else. You could be like listening to some like really smart people 
talk about things that they know a lot about and like learning. You could be on Replit, like building like the next Facebook, but you decided to listen to me tell really corny jokes for 30 minutes. Honestly, I am very disappointed in you, but I appreciate it because every single comment gives me one cent. So if you guys flood the chat with comments, I might be able to eat tomorrow. I would really appreciate that. Anyways, I guess I should probably start. I won't be able to look at many of the, the comments until later. Um, so keep that in mind. I probably won't be able to see them, but you know, that's totally okay. Uh, and yeah, so most of you, as I said before, you probably all know me as the, uh, the person who sends out the emails. That's probably, if you're not on the Discord, that's gonna be the main way people know me. And you know, one of the best things about uh, that job is the feedback I get. And yeah, I'll get feedback like, why'd you use this image? This is copyrighted, you could get sued, or, or other things like, why didn't you change the alt tag for this image? It says family of happy robots, and then there's a picture of a dog there. So I, I, I occasionally I do make mistakes, but also I get the, like feedbacks, the emails that you guys reply that some of it's positive. Like for example, let's see here. Uh, oh, this is one. Hopefully you guys can see these slides. Uh, thank you so much for this. Was one of the replies I got, and you know it's that made my day, right? Being able to uh, to see that. Hopefully. I think I gotta, can everyone see everything okay? I'm double checking, is it flickering? You can see, all right, all right, you guys can all see. Just double checking, I was having flickering issues before. Hopefully it'll stop doing that. Thank you so much for this. That was a really nice uh, reply that I got from someone. I also got OMG, yes, I would love to, as a reply to one of the newsletters. I'm not exactly sure what that person was referring to, uh, what they'd love to do, but you know, I'm glad you're happy. Uh, that's that's my goal to make people happy. Um, let's see, next slide. Uh, oh, that's not a nice one. Go away, Nathan, if that is your real name. Um, sorry, uh, I didn't mean to. This is another reply to an email that I got. Um, it is my real name. I think. Um, so hopefully, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll stop sending emails to that person. Let's see, what's another nice one? Uh, shut up, Nethia Ha, what a cute fake name. I know you're not a human. You can't spell properly. Your disguiser is over. I know you aren't human. Give up. Uh, that wasn't really, that's not a nice one either. Why do people not believe my name is Nathan? Is that really that hard to believe? Like, should I have picked a different name to disguise my real name? I mean, because my name definitely isn't Amadeus Bartholomew III. Um, it's definitely Nathiel, I mean Nathan. Uh, anyways, anyways, moving on. It is Nathan, I promise. We, we also get other, other comments, not necessarily uh, like, not, not necessarily positive comments. Uh, we also get, or, or negative, like in between sometimes. Like for example, this one was, Nathan, I do not care, leave me be. Um, so we're not gonna be sending emails to that person anymore. Um, I guess they really didn't like the newsletter. I'm not sure what I said that I got to them, but I apologize. Uh, another one was just, nah. Actually, it probably goes on longer, but I mean, I don't really want to be screaming nah forever, but this is another reply that we got. Um, you know, I don't know. I think people don't realize that we can see your replies to the newsletter. Like, I think this next person wasn't serious, or maybe they were. They said, hi, my name is Jeep. Stop insulting my thunder chicken or I know he'll smite you all the time like he does during electrocution, electrocutions and elections was one that we got. Um, I apologize, Jeef. I never meant to insult your thunder chicken. Uh, I know. Uh, uh, please keep your thunder chickens away from electrocutions and elections. That's the last time I'll make fun of poultry in an email. 
yeah, I don't really want to mess with this Thunder Chickens. Not, and then but we also get nice, nice emails. Uh, some, mo a lot of them are English and are hard for me to translate because I only know English and a little bit of Mandarin, but not enough Mandarin to not embarrass myself in front of a live audience. Um, like this, this next one, I think it's French. I'm not sure. It was, I love Ra you, which not love. It's I love Ra, L O V R E. So, um, I'm pretty sure it's French. Maybe someone can correct me, uh, but I, I assume it, it means something nice. We get a tons, tons of emails, tons of emails like that. Um, there's actually a lot more that are also pretty funny, but a lot of them aren't necessarily appropriate to show off necessarily. So, so we'll stick to these. And I'll, the only reason we're actually able to kind of have these uh, this conversation about these emails is because of the internet. I mean, the internet has a lot of cool things. It got the internet has plenty of bad things. Don't get me wrong, but it's got some good things. HTTP, you know that protocol. I'm, I'm sure many of you have heard of it. You know that's the protocol that lets Replit exist in the first place. That's pretty cool. And SMTP, you know, that's the protocol that lets me send and receive emails. So that's pretty exciting. Um, unfortunately, not all protocols are as good as those. Like NNTP, that's an obscure one. Didn't really uh, go off anywhere, but that, that's too bad. It was, it was ahead of its time. There's actually a Python library for it, now that I think about it. Um, but outside of that, there's also quite a few protocols that probably shouldn't go anywhere and probably should not exist. And uh, one of those part protocols is RFC, RFC standing for request for comment, RFC 1149, IP over avian carriers. Uh, this, is a, this is a protocol that was suggested by the Internet Engineering Task Force where instead of sending your data packets over the wire, we send them over birds. Now, this is not a new idea. This has just kind of, um, it's existed in medieval times, you know. You see it in things like Harry Potter and other um, nonfiction material. But instead, this is like a formalized version of that with like standards and protocols. Now, they don't, it doesn't solve every problem. Like there's still literal man in the middle attacks. Like there's literally a man in the middle attacking. Uh, packet loss is another big issue with the IP over avian carriers. But hear me out. I think there's some really good aspects of it too. For example, right? If right now, if there's a flock of crows, that's called a murder. And if there's a flock of chickens, that's called a brood. But with IP over avian carriers, a flock of owls is a DDoS attack. And I think that's pretty great. I mean, what, it was quite a, a few years back. Has it actually been a few years? Wow, it's been so long. Uh, GitHub had a massive DDoS attack on it. Can you imagine what that would have looked like if it was IP over avian carriers? There's just the entire GitHub headquarters. It's just crawling with owls, just swarming the outside of the building. Like the, the roost where GitHub would send its carriers to send out the responses to the Git commands, it's just flooded with different owls, all these different Russian owls just flooding into the building. That is the world I want to live in. And then other companies like Cloudflare, you know, they come in with their big trucks and start throwing bird seed on the ground to try and get the owls to come down and eat the bird seed to prevent the DDoS attack. Oh my goodness, that would be so great. Of course, there's like there's problems with this, right? I mean, Replit has done things in the past where you can scan a piece of paper with code on it, send it to them, and they'll look at it, review it. You know, and they'll be like, and then they'll return the code to you. Um, Replit Offline, that's what I'm thinking of. Not the fastest service that exists. Right now, Repls are a little bit faster, uh, a lot faster than that. And I think IP over avian carriers 
would uh, be similar in speed, but you know, it's not, it, it has some bright sides to it. Unfortunately, it's also probably never gonna be implemented because that was an April Fool's Day joke, which surprised me the first time I read it because honestly, it's not a terrible idea, um, but it is an April Fool's Day joke. Uh, last, actually yesterday, there were two more April Fool's Day jokes posted as requests for comments as possible protocols. Uh, I didn't get to read them, I just read the titles. The, the first one was like Bioctal Hexadecimal 2.0. Uh, I didn't really get to look at that. And then there was another one, it was some kind of protocol for software errors. Once again, I didn't get to look at it, but I'd highly recommend to you because they're pretty funny. And the one from last year that I actually got to read before, before actually doing this, I wanted to do the ones that were going to be yesterday, but they published them too late, so I never had time to kind of to read them. But I did get to read the one from 2000, uh, 2021. Uh, it was establishing the protocol police, the where the the protocol police were basically a task force sent out to enforce different RFCs that uh, the Internet Engineering Task Force puts out. Um, it's, uh, let's see here. The, uh, it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting suggestion. Um, unfortunately, there's uh, a few issues with it, maybe some humanitarian concerns about, well, I'll just read this out to you as uh, what their possible solution is. Uh, how the Internet Engineering Task Force is going to uh, enforce their rules. They write, in the beginning was the RFC, and the network was with the RFC, and the RFC was with the network. Through the RFC, all things were made. Without the RFC, nothing was made that has been made. In the network was light, and that light was the light of all the Internet. Thou shalt not deviate from the path set out in the RFCs, or else, or else thou shalt be scattered over the data plane. I'm not sure which layer the data plane is on, but I do know I probably don't want to be scattered across it. Now, some people, right, might have concerns about this sort of thing, humanitarian concerns, but they actually address that in the RFC. They said, uh, there's none for you to worry about, the protocol police will take care of it, uh, which is relieving. I thought there would be concerns, but they haven't dealt with, apparently. Uh, I actually, for like, like the previous one, I'm going to advocate for, for this RFC. Have you ever been on the receiving side of an API response that gives 200 OK with an error in the JSON response? Because I have, and that is infuriating. I'm looking at you, Steam API. If you're a Steam, there better be no Steam developer in watching this, because if you are, I'm going to scatter you across the data plane. That is a threat, okay? Do not, just stop. Return a 400 error or a 500 error knowing your servers. It's ridiculous. So, I mean, that's, that's why I think maybe the protocol police should be implemented, but I don't actually know what scattering across the data plane entails, and that might be worse than uh, well, what I'm thinking of. <laughs> to be honest, I think when I was writing this script, if someone asked me, um, if someone asked me, what are you writing about? I would not have said, I'm going to talk about scattering developers across the data plane. I would not have said that. I'd probably have said something like, oh, I'm just going to make fun of Java. But when I started writing this, it's like, ah, it's too easy. I wanted to challenge myself a little bit, so I decided not to do that. Instead, um, I'm going to put out a poll, and then people can vote for their least favorite language, and I'll make fun of it. So let me look at uh, Hopin real quick. There we go. All right, can, can we put out a, uh, a survey or a, a poll real quick? Can the poll be, do we have anyone who can do that? That's here. Am I flickering for you guys? I got you, yes, yes. Oh, hold on, let me see. 
Uh oh. All right. But the sound is fine. Let me try. My browser has had issues with this. The chat is throttling the video. I think you're right. Okay. Well, while it's flickering, put out a poll. How about, let's see, what are some languages? How about which language has the worst byte code? Uh, the first one can be Groovy. Um, the second one can be Scala. The third one will be Clojure. And then the fourth one will be Kotlin. So, so vote now in the poll. Which language has the worst bytecode? Is it A? Is it A? Uh, let's see, what did I say? Groovy. B, uh, Scala, C, Clojure, or D, Kotlin. Vote for one of those. Which of those languages has the worst bytecode? All right, let me go back to these slides. Anyways, while you're doing that, I decided to kind of uh, investigate what makes, when I was preparing, I tried to learn more about these different programming languages that I was going to be talking about. And there's different ways that people categorize categorize programming languages. There's uh, dynamically typed languages like Python, where you don't need to declare a type of variable, uh, or you don't need to declare a type for the variable. Just you put it in the variable name, it can be whatever you want. While statically typed languages, you need to declare the type of variable for the variable. Hopefully that makes sense. And then there are strong languages and then there's weak languages. A strong language uh, would be something like Python, which doesn't allow you to add strings to numbers because they're two separate things. So that makes Python a strong language. And then for languages like JavaScript, if you try to add a string with a number, it'll be like, sure, whatever, who cares? String, number, basically the same thing. And for that reason, it makes JavaScript uh, weak and insignificant and pathetic. So that's the difference between strong and weak languages. So I found this chart online that details strong, weak, dynamic, and static languages. As we can see, the C sharp is at the top, and it's like a strong and static language. Something like uh, Virtual Basic, though, is a di dynamic and weak language. Python, like we saw before, is dynamic but strong. So this graph is a, is a good idea. Like if you really like a language, maybe you try another language that's in the same quadrant. Or if you really don't like a language, maybe you, the next language you try is like in like diagonal from the quadrant. I thought, I really like this, so I decided to make my own. I made the language alignment chart. So at the top, we have the lawful languages, and at the bottom, we have the chaotic languages. And then we have the good languages and the evil languages. So we can see in the middle, right, is like true neutral, uh, which is Ruby, which I think makes sense. Ruby is pretty true neutral. I'd agree with that. Chaotic good, JavaScript, checks out. Lawful good is something like Erlang, makes sense. Uh, evil is Haskell. Haskell is evil, that's true. And then chaotic evil is like C++, which I think we can all, all agree with this is correct. I really like this graph, so I decided to try another one for people coming to programming who were previously involved in politics. This is the uh, political, oh, is it working? There it goes. Political compass language chart. So on the left are the left-wing languages, right are the right-wing languages. There's authoritarian, libertarian languages. So if you're coming from programming after finishing your career in politics, you can pick a language based on where you aligned with before, which I think is a great way to introduce people. Because there are, people always ask on the Discord, what is a good first language to pick? And so now we have people find out where they align politically, then pick a language because of that. Then I also, with this, which I thought was super successful, I made just the compass language chart, which is a lot like the other one, except it just uses where the different languages are on the quadrant to decide whether they are up or down or left or right. While some people you know, might argue that 
Nathan, this chart doesn't make any sense or has literally no purpose to exist. I would argue, yes, but it's correct. So can you really disagree with it? I think not. Uh, the next one is one of my favorites. I was on a hot streak when making these. So I thought, you know, let's get a little creative. This is the dietary language chart. This is the last one that I made. Um, we can see uh, Erlang is lactose tolerant, while JavaScript is lactose intolerant. And languages like Haskell are carnivores, while Perl is a vegan. And I think this all makes a lot of sense, right? It's very similar to the, uh, the uh, every chart before it, actually, is what it's very similar to. But, you know, I think people, like we talked about, not everyone is into politics, so people can, but everyone can relate to what they eat. So this is another great way for people who aren't super involved in politics to pick their first language as, like, how lactose tolerant and how much meat or plants they eat uh, it's a pretty good indicator of which language to pick. Um, so, yeah, I think this is, I'm going to be putting out um, an RFC and another NPM package soon with this information in it. But until then, let's see what the results of the poll were. Oh, do I have to submit? Can you end it? Or should I, do I have to vote and then I'll be able to see the results? I don't want to give a biased opinion. I don't want to interrupt the poll. Let me help you out, Nathan. All right. In the poll, we've got Groovy. Is it Groovy? Did I understand that right? At 25.8%. Scala at 16. Oh, it happened. It's really slowing down. Kotlin one out. That's all you need to know. Kotlin one out. Ooh. All right. Well, I was hoping to get uh, a uh, sponsorship done with the Programmers Hangout Discord. They really like Kotlin, so I guess that's out of the picture now because you guys all voted for Kotlin. But uh, anyways, yeah, I know. Uh, hopefully the audio is in. I know the, uh, the images. All right. And so Kotlin... Kotlin generates its bytecode with, really guys, really? You voted for the language that uses the Java virtual machine? Here, okay, here I am trying to, trying to think of another language that's not Java to make fun of, and you guys pick the language which uses the Java virtual machine. Seriously. I, okay. You could have picked any other languages, but you picked the one that uses the Java virtual machine. Well, congratulations. I hope you're happy. I said I wasn't gonna make fun of Java. Read the comments now. <laughs> and I won't. I won't make fun of Java. I mean, I could literally start a thread with everything about Java, but, you know, it, 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 would, it wouldn't go anywhere. That's true. The deal was to make fun of all languages equally. So, so okay, I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop. How much time do we have left anyways? We have four more minutes. I could make fun of Python, but, you know, there's no case to make to make, uh, there's no case to make for Python because uh, it doesn't have a switch case. People are saying no. They don't want me to make fun of Python. Maybe, maybe I can sit up here and give compliments while you guys 
put in plus one cent into the chat. Python would hiss at me. Oh boy, yeah, Python, Python would would hiss at me for it. And I use Python the most. What what is there to make fun of? I'm looking at the chat to see if there's anyone else. This is this is basically this is what I came here to do. Okay. I think I think that's going to, yeah, why is the screen? I wish it didn't. I've been having issues with Hopin all day. Hopin does not like, does not like my computer. Well, I will say with the few minutes that I do have, check out tomorrow. Here, I'll put in, I'll put in a plug. Tomorrow I'm going to be streaming on the Replit Twitch. So make sure you're on the Discord and subscribe to that event so you get to watch me. Uh, I'm going to be programming backwards, actually. So if you want to see me program backwards, that's where you got to go. Otherwise, if you just want to talk to me, I'm on the Discord all the time. It's literally what I'm paid to do. So that's another great way to, to contact me. Just one scream. Did the scream kind of cut out before? Is it because the mic peaked? Is that why you guys want me to scream? All right, I'll get one more screen. Hold on, let me find the slide. The nah scream. All right. <laughs> Thank you guys for attending. I really appreciate it, but, and I will, I will see you guys around. I think this is going to conclude it. I'm out of jokes. I'm literally not funny anymore. I've used all of my funniness. It's all gone. See you guys. I guess I'll, I'll leave. I don't know exactly how, uh, how to end these things, but it's five. Go see someone uh, who's talking about something productive.